Hi, Ben Pearson, The Roadster Tracker, and I want to talk to you a little bit about Starlink and about how it's actually going to be commercialized. In order to do that, we're going to look at some of the business models for some of the kind of related industries, although Starlink is really in a kind of new class in and of itself. And let's talk about how I think the commercialization path will continue. Now, I am not an expert. I have worked with communication satellites before, so I have some sense of the industry but I have no working knowledge of anything to do with Starlink at all, and I can't find anything about how they plan to commercialize it. But let's talk about how this might actually happen. So in the very early days, when the Constellation is first going to be operational, it's not going to have 100% effectiveness. It's not going to work from everywhere 100% of the time, even in its designated region. So what kind of customers are going to be looking for internet that meets that? Well. It's going to be people who probably just don't care about 100% connectivity. Airplanes, you don't expect perfect connectivity. Cruise ships, the military, um, they do want some connectivity, but for the most critical systems, they probably won't care that much. And even remote islands and stuff like that. For the most part, I think it's going to be a number of these instances that are kind of single remote points that want to connect up to the internet that don't want to lay some kind of a ground connection, especially mobile ones, and maybe to a lesser extent islands and stuff like that. It'll work fantastic, but it's going to be mostly point-to-point -point connections. In the early days, the Starlink will not have the ability to relay from satellite to satellite, so effectively you have to be within range of another ground station, which most of the cruise ships and the airplanes and such will be in range of another crown station. So it's probably going to be very high priced point to point connections. I'm not going to speculate how much that might be, but they're going to want really, really high speed that's near at 100% of time. So I expect it's going to be maybe in the several hundred dollars per month range or even higher. I really couldn't tell you. As the internet becomes more reliable and as they're able to connect in satellites for over the horizon, this is going to dramatically improve. You're going to start to have people who can rely on having perfect internet with this. And in this instance, you're going to start to see connections maybe in remote locations. One of the things that a lot of people say, well, Starlink is going to be used to give internet to the poor people that are living in Africa that don't have any other means. And I really think this is true. A satellite is always overhead. So you may as well make use out of this asset across the entire globe. You could sell to people who can afford it more at a higher price and people who can afford it less at a lower price. But you want to make at least some money across the entire globe. And you got to cover your costs somehow. So why not open up these stations? Now, I suspect initially it's going to be used, again, for point-to-point -point communication. I suspect in the earliest days what you're going to have is you're going to have a local ISP. Maybe they are wanting to provide cellular service to a region, as is very common throughout Africa, as I understand. You have these regions that are using this wireless connection and they will link each one of these remote sites to their main site through a Starlink satellite. It will probably provide this relay communication and as a result you'll be able to get much, much better coverage. You'll be able to start a new site for a relatively small thing. The cost of fiber is very, very expensive to lay it and Starlink, you can just set something up really quick and easy. So it will provide some better access to there. But there again, I think most of the customers are gonna be islands, cruise ships, airplanes, uh, government applications, etc. Now, where will it not compete? Well, you're not gonna use something like this to use a very, very low data width. The company Orbcom has a low earth orbiting network of satellites. They do not have 100% connectivity all the time, but they specialize in just sending little packets of data that can contain things like, hey, here's where I am. You can stick a little thing on a shipping container and figure out where it is from wherever you are in the world. And maybe you 
don't really care to know every second exactly where it is, just as long as you know every 15 minutes or so, that's perfectly fine. Starlink's not really going to compete with that. It will be a much larger system and have much, much higher data width, but you don't really replace that. Iridium has a phone connection where you can call up from anywhere in the world. There again, it's not really going to be the same market because the Starlink antenna is going to be like a pizza box. So maybe this big, it's going to be thin. It'll be wonderful to place on a house or in some location on a cruise ship, whatever, but it's not going to be like a phone size thing. So it's just not the same market. This will be closer to the market of a commercial TV where they will broadcast through a satellite that will relay that signal down to other ground stations, at least initially. As they continue to get more satellites and more bandwidth, then they'll start to open up to the masses. Now that's going to be a really interesting time. And I think it's going to be a little bit chaotic. It's going to be kind of rough. The Starlink satellites, when you're over a city, you're not really going to have enough bandwidth. You can't concentrate these like you can with fiber. With a fiber connection, you can wire up the city, you can put more mobile antennas to do a wireless connection through the city, but you can't put more satellites over a certain city. It just doesn't work that way. So in a city, it's not going to work as well, and it may be more expensive to try to discourage people from just massively using it, or there may be some other clever scheme that I'm not thinking of. Where it's really going to excel is in the rural areas. and. It's hard to say exactly what the range will be, but I suspect with a 40 degree line of sight visibility, it's going to be a couple hundred miles. So if you're within a couple hundred miles of a city, you're going to kind of share some of the bandwidth with that city and it's going to be rough, but it's only going to be the really big cities. I think that'll be a problem. This will work fantastic in the U S Midwest, for instance, it'll work fantastic in the third world. You can set up a antenna from anywhere and, go communicate or cruise ships or whatever it may be. But it's not going to be the internet provider that everybody is going to use. Current satellite internet prices are very, very high and you have a very, very severe data bandwidth limitation and you can't, you don't have a very high latency. So, you know, you send a signal up to the satellite. It's going to take a few seconds before you get an answer back, which can be very, very frustrating. Starlink is going to just totally dominate that market because it's going to reduce those times and those prices significantly. In the end, I think Starlink is going to be a little different than its kind of pitch. It's kind of pitched as like Wi-Fi that's throughout the entire globe. And I think it's going to be a little bit more complex than that. You can't have a little tiny device. Maybe a laptop could theoretically have such an antenna built in, but probably not even that you're probably talking something a little bit larger. I could see, you know, a government secure laptop that has an antenna for Starlink built into it. Absolutely could see that. But something that is just a phone, probably not going to happen. But still, it's a really neat idea and I really look forward to it. I think it'll really change the way that we think about where to live these days, because quite frankly, Anybody in my generation will probably consider high-speed access to the internet as essential. I certainly do. If I were to go to an area and they said, oh yeah, we have dial-up internet or one megabyte per second access, I would be like, what kind of a backward world is this? But with Starlink as an option, then that's a fantastic idea. And I think it could really help to connect up a lot of the world. The rural networks that are throughout the world that sometimes this is pitched for. I think it's going to help with some of that, but it's really, really difficult to just completely connect up the internet to a certain spot. You have to have the technology to do so. And it's not something you can just do. And it's not something they're going to do as a charity project either. You know, they're going to have to get something out of it. Maybe they're only covering their expenses. Maybe they only cover their expenses when they're going out to put an internet connection in some rural third world country, but they have to at least cover their expenses. 
I think it's going to be countries like the United States, though, and the military and cruise ships and stuff like that, that will really help to fund internet access, to fund SpaceX, to make it grow in size, and ultimately, you know, take humanity to Mars or something like that. It's not going to be off the backs of the third world, as some people have speculated. Thank you guys much for joining me. Let me know whatever questions or comments you guys have. And until next time, keep on tracking. Take care.